Hi, everybody. For the continued mid-fuse bulkhead, the very first one. Uh, we've got our rear wing horns. Not exactly what you would call them. There's a name for them. Something, something assembly. Uh, so here we are doing the reaming as I was describing in the last video. Uh, you know, this is an attach point for the rear wing. So there's, you know, it's a high stress point. And you need those bolt holes to be exact. And they're big, so... And it's nice already getting in and do some series hardware, right? You know, some AN5 bolts. Um, even got the torque wrench out. I had to move. I had to move my toolbox around just so I could get the the reamer in position. So again, once you bolt a hole, now you've got a new, you know, anchor point. Then you can go back and bolt, uh, sorry, bolt. Then you can go back and read the other holes. And then bolt them. There's the torque wrench. Everything, I, I, I put everything at 120 inch pounds, or 10 foot pounds. Because there's 12 inches in a foot. So 120 divided by 12, 10. Okay, so... That part's done. A couple of doublers on, sides on, got those horns on, that's done. So now we're moving on to the uh, next bulkhead up. This is the rear half of the wing box. And the first thing you do is you, uh, you countersink a bunch of holes in the bottom flange uh, for skins. Then in the top, you countersink everything for rivets, because that's all nut plates. And I love the instructions. It's just, you know, countersink and get ready for some for some nut plates. All within, you know, two lines. And so just like that, we have nut plates on the flange of the bulkhead. It's nice. I did have to drill a couple out. I wasn't happy with the way I'd done them, so drilled them out. I'm getting much more exact as I get older, as well as fragile. But thank you, Nexium. So behind the shadow of that bulkhead, there's two attached brackets that go onto this bulkhead. One left and one right, and that's it. There's no doublers, it's just these two things. <clears throat> um, so I'm just doing all the deburring, including the holes. Once that's done, I'm just going to go ahead and prime it up, and then you click go it in, and you just rivet it on. Oh, pardon me for a minute here. We had a little bit of drama. <clears throat> the hangar door, those massive things that you see behind me, one of them decided to jam, and so I had to have the port authorities come out at like 7 o'clock at night, and... It was a mess. We had four adult men, I mean, that includes me. Each of us had 30-pound pry bars trying to lift one of those doors back up on its tracks. The thing must weigh a ton. Anyway, I don't know what's more ridiculous. Those doors are the fact that I continue to work in the dark. Yeah, that's a little bit of both. So, uh, when you're working on putting these side angles on... Uh, one of the things that the instructions tell you is go ahead and click it on, but then you want to take some number or some A and six bolts and put them through. There, there's some holes for some A and six bolts in the spar, and they, you know, so go ahead and put the bolts through the doubler or uh, whatever you want to call this thing, the angle bracket, and the spar to help it line up. Well, I don't have any A and six bolts, but 
let me just tell you. Quick tip, Clecos just happen to be the same size. So, three, so it's three-eighths of an inch. All right, let's just mute that. So with the uh, slow-mo here, we're going to show you just a quick shot of using those Clecos as uh, substitute A and 6 bolts. And you will see that they fit very nicely. So anyway, that's it for now. Love you all. Thanks for joining me. And I'll see you soon. See, look, they fit nice.